the law of compound effect and how wonderful it can be. That's the title of this week's newsletter, Joyful Artists Musings. And I'm Jesse Burgart. Thank you for joining me. The law of compound effect is similar to compound interest. The difference is that instead of the unit of money, you've replaced it with focused efforts. You pay attention to, invest in, work toward, and think about any given aspect, and it's guaranteed to compound over time. To leverage that power, I audit myself, my thoughts, my choices, my efforts, because those will compound. How are you practicing compounding effect? And all my my, uh, three dogs are sleeping currently, but it is a very high probability that you will hear the bulldog snoring. So I probably told you that the last couple of audios, but here we go. Hello and welcome to Joyful Artist Musings newsletter. This is the rest of the newsletter. Joy, we're gonna talk about James 3, 17 through 18. Two, lesson, the Eckhart Tolle experiment. Three, art, art and tech. James 3, 17 through 18. This is that scripture. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. The other day I heard a well-respected spiritual leader say that this fruit of the spirit is better than the gifts of the spirit. It caught my attention partially because I didn't understand it, but I unpacked it And I got to say, I agree with him. Here's what I gather. The gifts represent ability and the fruit represents character or traits or personality. One is rooted in an outer action and acknowledgement while the other is inner. In other words, the gifts, actions, abilities are thwarted if the fruit, the inside, the character is no good. So I find this interesting to ponder. What are your insights on this? Please share if you like. Lesson, the Eckhart Tolle experiment. If you hadn't heard, I decided to read Eckhart Tolle 80 days in a row live on YouTube. And that finished up this past week. And uh, little did I know that I was participating in some sort of self-assigned experiment. If you can practice something for 30 days, it will start to become part of your life, your routines. And after an 80-day sprint with Tole, I am indeed a changed woman. Here's what changed. My capability to enter into a present state of mind on command. And here's why that matters. To be in the present state of mind means that you're giving your brain a break. It means that you can be in the present without internal chatter. It's like switching the TV in your mind to off And that is actually the most healing experience I've ever had. I knew going into this project it would be good because listening to wise people is always good, but clearly I had no idea how important it would become for my life. Now I'm still in awe of the experience, which turned into an experiment, which changed me. My mind is blown. Have you had a book, movie, class, or mentor affect you that much? And three, art, art plus tech. So confession, I've taken a long time to like technology. And while it's much, much worse than that, I used to hate computers. I hated them. (laughs) So I've come a long way, but it was not the computer's fault. It was my inefficiency and struggle to learn how to use them that I really hated. Only that it's been 20 years. Plus I've had many tech, tech projects and over time developed the skills needed while learning to keep my cool, was I finally brought to enjoy computer and digital tech for what they are. They're a tool. So how do I mix art plus technology, as that is a big part of my daily life? Simply put, I take baby steps. If I need to learn something, I break it down into small, teeny, tiny steps, and I celebrate every teeny, tiny achievement. (laughs) That's what keeps my relationship to computers and tech on a respectable level. For example, my next project is a video with slide deck and that will include information about my services with Jesse Burgart Art 
and this will need to be condensed into a manageable watch time. In other words, as short as possible. And I don't know how to do it, but by breaking it down into bite-sized goals, I can see it as a min multiple mini goals, and that actually helps me a ton. I can do this, anyone can do this with any sort of project that they have. It can be psychological, emotional, whatever. If you've got a big challenge, break it down into tiny, tiny, many challenges that you know you can overcome. Do you have any strategies for this? Please feel free to share. P.S. A childhood lesson on bonding with others through creativity. One issue growing up as the eldest sibling was what to do while babysitting. Not a big issue for certain, but still, it was in everyone's best interest not to mull around in the world of boredom. The best way to enjoy time was through creative means. Not only did this get us chatting together and laughing, but it also got us away from watching too many Barney episodes. Or any other episode you can think of. Spongebob was a hit. I, I, I did like the first season of Spongebob, so anyhow, tangent. Here are some of my favorite ways to create with children. Uh, watercolor pencils. Try drawing animals with clothes on them. It's a lot of fun. Playing pretend. Fairy worlds are always a good go-to. Walking outside and exploring nature and venturing into new micro plant worlds. My dog is on a roll with his snoring right now. Anyhow, it's always a pleasure. Thank you for sharing any and all thoughts and blessings to you this weekend and week. Have fun, be safe, and I will see you next Friday.